What do you do after your IT guy gets hit by a truck? What are your options? Well, in an ideal situation, number one, we, of course, we're human beings, we send flowers. But number two, ideally, you're going to invoke the detailed plan. And that's very key, a detailed plan that you already had in place to ensure the continuance of your business after just such a situation. And if you're able to do that, then you're able to go back to business as usual. That's the ideal situation, and that's what we strive to talk to people about. Now, the other option, if you didn't have a disaster recovery plan in place, you're going to have to start a very difficult task of putting a very complex puzzle back together. And that puzzle is your business. You need to figure out um, how to put that puzzle back together, and quite frankly, sometimes some of the key people aren't around to help you. Afterwards, you're going to have to accept the fact that you're going to lose time, money, reputation, and eventually clients. So our agenda today is to talk to you a little bit about the facts of not having a disaster recovery plan in place, understanding the impact to your business talk to you a little bit about the types of disasters, and then talk to you about steps that you can start taking uh, in phases to protect your business. And then hopefully, if we have some questions, we can address them at the end. So let's talk about some facts about disaster recovery planning. If you look back, there's a few um, unfortunate events in our country anyway. Uh, that comes to mind when people think about true disasters. One is Katrina, the hurricane that hit uh, New Orleans, but then the other one is the incident at the World Trade Center. So if we go back to that time, after that incident, 40 percent, 40 percent, almost half of the companies without disaster recovery capability were out of business in six weeks. Not six months, not six years, but within six weeks. In fact, almost half of businesses that experience any disaster go out of business within five years. Now, the whole idea of this is to improve your odds, to take the right measure to make sure that you are not in that statistic. So if you look at what goes on today, file corruption and data loss are becoming much more common. I mean, we read in the papers about viruses hitting. We read in the papers about how data is lost. If you go back 10 years ago, the average company uh, would have to spend between $100,000 and a million dollars a year for just desktop-oriented disasters. And those are both hard and soft costs. And if you think that was 10 years ago, that cost is growing exponentially. You can just about triple that cost right now. So what is disaster recovery? And, and people look at it in different ways. But it's a series of actions. It's not just one thing, but it's a series of actions that you can take to counteract something unforeseen happening. Now, what are the disasters that we talk about? Well, it can be power failure. You can have underground cable cuts or failures. The typical natural disasters. Here in South Florida, we face the threat of hurricanes every year, um, fires, floods, but also mistakes in system administration. Sabotage. It can be internal, it can be external. Someone putting in a virus, a disgruntled employee putting a virus into your systems, or from the outside. Or it can be something as simple as a loss of a very key employee, and we're going to address that in, in a few slides. So when we talk about disaster recovery, what do we typically think of? We typically think of, and most people think of, how to back up and restore data to computer systems, how to restore your network connections, how to replace the computers that you lose if it's a disaster. I mean, the physical hardware, and where do you put them? Where should you put your employees, uh, you know, if the building is damaged? So most people think about disaster recovery specifically in this way. So you need to have a plan. Certainly, you cannot ignore those aspects. All of those components, you need to have a plan in place. And here in South Florida, a lot of people do things like co-location and things to prevent uh, natural disasters from affecting their business and protecting their computers and protecting their network. 
the efficiency with which this is done can make all the difference in the world in terms of protecting that aspect of your business. However, you have to look at what the real cost of downtime is. It's more than just those technical components. When you're really planning to ensure your business's viability, you have to consider the following. And we're going to address these issues with you today. So a loss, lost productivity in, in idle employees, missing service level agreements. Um, what happens if you have agreements with, with customers out there and you're not able to uh, come through? Your reputation and customer service goes right down the drain. All of those things, the legal liabilities, you have contracts with people. And yes, if it's a big natural disaster, you know, there's people that can have empathy and understand. But if you have contracts with customers out there and you get a virus, <laughs> you get something that really wipes out uh, how you can operate, there's not going to be that kind of uh, kindness. So you have to look at the legal liabilities. The lawyers, are, lawyers never go away, right? Um, if it's a publicly traded company, you know your stock price goes down. There's many more things to consider. So what we really want to talk to you about is looking at disaster recovery, not just from the technical component, but think of it as business continuance planning. That should be your real goal. Instead of computer disaster recovery, you need to think in these terms. You need to have the plan for continuing your business, not just saving your computers. Because if you don't look at it that way, no amount of computers really create what you do every day in your organization. So what's the difference? <laughs> Examples of these items that typical planning, if you think about it, you know, you might leave this stuff out. Business processes, roles and responsibilities, we're going to go through in the next few slides each one of these things and talk to you a little bit about what we're talking about and how you can address them. <coughs> Many things make your business run. If you think about the processes and procedures that are in place in your business, those things are rarely documented. And the true processes and procedures of your company is usually all the combined knowledge of key employees in different departments. If you think about it, your purchasing department has its own processes and procedures. That's your purchasing department, but that may not go hand in hand with a different department, your accounting department, for instance, may have different processes and procedures. So those key people understand those things. When you combine them all together, that's what truly makes your business run. It's one of the most difficult things to put back in place after disaster if key employees are not available. Also, who does what? <laughs> who does what in in your organization. And if it's a disaster, what happens with the chain of command? Do you have a second in charge? Who's going to make the decision to invoke the plan? Um, if you think about it, who has signature authority? And we're talking about during a true disaster. If there's a big disaster, a natural disaster, and there's only one person with signature authority in your organization, that may not be such a good idea. So you want to consider kind of the chain of command and how you can keep the, the business running in the event some key employees aren't available. Loss of key individuals, and it's a very difficult thing to consider. <clears throat> we talk about mental notes. Now, mental notes, what does that mean? Every organization, I call them, I don't know, I don't know the audience out there so well, but if you remember the, the TV show MASH, there was Radar O'Reilly. Radar O'Reilly truly ran everything, right? And the idea is Steve knows how to do that. Radar knows how to do that. But what if he's not there? Who holds all the passwords for your network? Who has the technical understanding? Who knows the key relationships with your most important clients? How about the history of projects that you're involved in? Who knows the details of your contractual obligation? The key to all this is creating a plan, and it starts with documentation. It starts with documenting the processes and procedures in your business that truly makes you go. People don't really like to do documentation, but it needs to be done. 
data flow, information, what are the sources, who are the customers. Every day, your organization collects a great deal of data, every single day, and it comes from your customers coming in, you generate data. You need to document that process flow. Without X information, without this information, does Y still work? Who knows about that? You need to keep that documentation updated. So no matter what happens, no matter what disaster occurs, you have the documentation that you can understand where that data flow is supposed to be coming from and also where the data flow is supposed to be going. So business recovery. You want to think about this. You want to set up expectations up front. We're in South Florida, and you know, South Florida is beautiful, and, and I, I don't think I'd want to be anyplace else. But the bottom line is, is if there's a major hurricane here or what have you, and your business is down for X number of days, or who knows? You don't have a disaster recovery plan. How long will it take for you to get back up and running? But you need to set expectations up front. You can set those expectations up with your customers, your partners, your vendors. They can be pretty simple addendums to contracts that you have that in the event of a natural disaster or what have you. But these are some of the things that you should be reviewing. You also need to understand what needs to be up and running first. You need to assign priorities to, for recovery. In other words, your business is your individual entity. What systems need to be up and running and taken care of quickly first? What processes need to be quickly repaired first in order for you to continue your business? So say it three times with me. Document, document, document. You need to create documentation so a contractor could start your business. You need to create and main, maintain policies and procedures for updating that documentation. It should be annually or during any major change because processes change, procedures change. We kind of take it for granted. But if we're not documenting how things are done, if there's a disaster, it's hard to put the pieces of the puzzle back together. So is it over? When is the disaster considered over? When is it business as usual? What steps need to be taken or, or put in place so you know, hey, okay, we weathered that storm, we're, we're going forward. That's something that, that you should put down as, as policy, that if in the event of a disaster, we'll know we're all up and running. When this happens, this happens, this happens. You need to have a goal. So <clears throat> we talked about things that typically are left out. How about things when you talk about business continuance planning in disaster recovery that's almost always left out? Number one, the mental notes. We covered that, but it is one of the most difficult things to, to really document unless you, you have a policy in place. Steve knows this, Steve knows that. Well, there needs to be a place where you can go and understand or anyone can understand what Steve knows. You have to have periodic testing of, of plan and documentation. You need to update your procedures. If something changes and you do something different in your accounting department, well, that needs to be documented. This is how we're doing it now. It's about details, and it's about making sure that that documentation is taken seriously throughout your organization. So how do you do it? How are you going to make sure it's being done? Let's face it. 32%, this is the studies, show that all lost data is due to human error. And it's typically just what we all do as human beings. We're very busy running the business. We're very busy with our own tasks. So why take the time to work on something that we can put off? And we probably, hopefully, we never face a true disaster, right? So we probably won't use it anyway. I'll have time to do it tomorrow. It's someone else's responsibility. But when it comes to what we see, we see too many people that have lost data that they really wish they would have taken the time to safeguard. And you think you're doing it all just by backing up the data on the computers. What we're talking about is taking steps beyond that and documenting true procedures and processes that involve how your business runs. So to summarize a little bit for you, um, these processes should be looked at throughout the different departments, right? You want to document things about relationships. You want to understand what the recovery criteria is. What, what type of policies are you going to put in place and how are you going to 
test that. When something changes in your organization, or at least annually, you should test and you should make sure that the documentation is in place. And the slide that said that you should be able to have a contractor come and start up your business, it's, it's hard to comprehend if you haven't begun the process. But truly, in order to survive and to have your business continue, not just your computers, you really want to make sure that that documentation is being done. Implementing a plan. It's, it should be approached in phases. Um, you want to take a look at the data flows, your process analysis. You want to see the costs, the hard and soft dollar costs of this is down or that's down. What does it mean to me? You want to make sure that you have and do not ignore the, the typical, the hardware component, the technical component of disaster recovery. You want to make sure that your backup systems are in place. You want to make sure that you've really looked at the best way to protect your, your network from viruses. You're doing your patchwork on time. That you have the right level of support beyond, behind the scenes, making sure that you truly have 24-7 support. Are you considering different things that could go wrong? Is, are your servers being monitored? Those types of things. Um, then implementation and testing, annual testing of your disaster recovery plan or after significant changes. Or if you hire new key employees, they need to be part of the plan. So it's, it's departmentally that you want to do it. And you can break it down and bring it all together in one place. And that makes it much more practical. So that is really a brief 70,000 foot view of disaster recovery plan as we see it. And we work with our customers every day, our partners every day. We, we really are business consultants before anything else. So we'd love an opportunity to talk to you further. We'd love an opportunity to sit down with you if you have questions individually. Here's my contact information that you can look please go to our website. We're always posting white papers on different, uh, different topics. Um, and if you'd like, we'd like you to follow us on Facebook and, and Twitter. Do you have any questions? And none from the point. Any questions? No, Jeffrey, I don't have any questions. OK. Well, we really appreciate you attending. And we will be running other webinars uh, throughout the year. And we hope that you will come back. And, and if you have any further questions or if you're looking for an individual consultation, we'd like a 15-minute or 20-minute uh, get-together, that would be great with us. OK? Yes, Jeffrey. I will contact you in case we need any, any help trying to adjust how our recovery plan over here. Mm -hmm. well, I appreciate all, all this meeting is very refreshing and very helpful for us to, to update our, our procedures over here, like documenting whatever everybody knows and mm -hmm. their, their importance in the company and what they do and what they, what they should give us in um, documentation. So if something happens to them, so we can recover and continue our business with no problem. That, that is a, that's a huge step if you start taking that, to make sure that what people know are, is actually written someplace that you can find it, right? Yes, Jeffrey, I appreciate you took the time to set up a meeting like this. Okay. We certainly need it, and I look forward for the next meeting then. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you.